Two things matter most when it comes to earthquake damage, how big and how far. In the case of the 1967 Fairbanks earthquake, the how big was 5.7. It's not a huge earthquake in the context of this exhibit, but how far, it was close. It was close under Fairbanks, and that's why when we look at just the scale of the news coverage and in this exhibit, this is a big deal. And this is a reminder, if we think, for example, toward the 1937 earthquake on a nearby fault zone in Fairbanks, that earthquake was 250 times larger than the 1967 earthquake. So as we look at the damage and the scale of the news coverage from 1967, keep in mind that we scientists believe that this fault could be capable of something 250 times larger, and that would be a truly devastating event in the Fairbanks region. Here in 1967, I'm struck by the news coverage. Some things are a matter of the times, such as the scientists here dangling a cigarette over the paper records. On campus today, tobacco products are entirely banned. Um, but if we look at the sort of coverage of news, the photographs uh, are dominant. So across the top of this page, you have the unusual use of damage from photographs, broken windows, broken products. Um, we have the scientific aspect from the earthquake center at the time, a bit of a mess downtown, a full two-page spread of photographs showing toppled chimneys, damaged, there's damaged uh, foundations. We see a dominance of these stories throughout several days of photos. Looking at the local news alongside the earthquakes, we see this A67 schedule. That's commemorating the 100-year anniversary of the purchase of Alaska from Russia. These events on this summer solstice time, June 21st, were happening throughout the news coverage each day, more aftershocks and some new events from this coverage. As we look at the header, the forgotten Tembler, this is referring to the fact that two months later, a natural disaster far greater than this earthquake occurred. This is shown here in this photograph of Fairbanks. This is water. This is the banks of the Chena River overflowing and inundating uh, downtown Fairbanks and, and all of Fairbanks, as you can see here. If you walk around Fairbanks today, there are signs that mark the water level from this event. This is a catastrophic event that changed the way we look at flood uh, mitigation in the interior. So although the magnitude 5.7 earthquake was perhaps overshadowed by the events later in the summer 1967, I think a key message from this exhibit collectively is that the faults, this earthquake that produced a 5.7, is capable of a much, much larger event um, and potentially one that would have made it less forgotten and overshadowed by the flood. The top shelf has multiple messages. It shows a collection of alcohol bottles from the museum's collection from mid-20th century, the time of this event and earlier. We see a wire covering the bottles, and that's significant here, because it's a way that someone can protect their goods from the effects of earthquake shaking. If we look at the 1947 front page, the front page coverage said, liquor stores which fared worse during the 1937 shock, got off easier yesterday due to the fact that in most cases, the stock was held on shelves by wires stretched in front of it. So in 1947, it had only been 10 years since an earlier earthquake, people still knew, hey, we gotta protect our products. Nowadays, in having all these earthquakes that we've looked at, we don't protect really anything on the shelves. As time goes on, people forget the kinds of things that had happened, they forget to protect them. So the wire is a reminder that this was a way to prevent the kinds of loss, which for the earlier part of the century was often um, liquor stores and a lot of damage um, and wares. The second connection is with Sourdough Jack, who became the mascot on the front page of the Fairbanks Daily News Miner starting sometime in the late 50s or 60s. And we see when there's a big earthquake, and that's the dominant news, Sourdough Jack, who is essentially an alcoholic, um, is commenting on the earthquake and shaking. So here's one from June 22, 1967. Boy, am I relieved. I had just about given up booze until I found out that I wasn't the only one who was shaky. 
So we've got about 12 of these featured where Sourdough Jack is providing his commentary on the dominant front page news, which is, in those cases, the earthquake story.